Hello everyone. I am Karthik Sharma, managing editor at Electric for Media, and I am here to welcome you all to a webinar titled on modernizing your lending business and transforming your customer experience with low code. This webinar is organized by Do It Lean and Out Systems in association with Elets Techno Media and Banking and Finance Post. As they say, that uh, change is inevitable, change is constant. You must be thinking, uh, what made me begin with the quote on change? The world around us changed drastically in the last two years and proving Darwin's theory right, only those survive the blow who are fit. As aptly said by the genius, survival of the fittest. And this, this uncertainty, changing and innovating is, is significant and emerging as a game changer low code development platforms are enabling organizations to overcome various digital transformation roadblocks and level up the customer experience so with this i would like to welcome our special guest and before that i give the I introduce you to all our three speakers of uh, this webinar. Uh, I introduce you to Mr. Shashank Tatek, Senior Vice President of Edelweiss, Mr. Pramod Jain, Head of Delivery in Do It Lean, Mr. Krishna Ji, Team Lead for Out Systems, and I'll be uh, moderating uh, this webinar. After introducing uh, these three eminent speakers, I would like to now welcome our special guest for this gathering, Mr. Shashank Sathe, who is Senior Vice President of Edelweiss and who will be sharing his journey and then participate in a live discussion on the key considerations that are on, the, on everyone's mind. I would like to uh, give some details about Mr. Sathe uh, to the audience. Uh, Mr. Sathe is, as, as I said, he's Senior Vice President for Technology in Edelweiss. He's, uh, he comes with overall 25 plus years in core IT and ex expertise in low code development platform. He's also excelled in areas like full stack, open stack development, high availability computing, FinTech remittance platforms, inclusive financial services, online ad servers, RIA, e-banking, and high volume transaction processing as well. He is responsible for enabling the adoption of digital transformation across the organization and the performance of digital channels. With over 25 years of experience, he brings with him rich and diverse experience across sectors such as financial services, media, entertainment, internet and printing. Prior to Edelweiss, he has uh, held leadership positions with various organizations such as Bajaj Capital, Aditya Birla Money, Rajshri Media and Repro India. He holds a bachelor degree from University of Mumbai and postgraduate in management development program IT from IIM Ahmedabad. We are fortunate enough to have such an eminent personality speaking at this webinar. And I now request Mr. Shashank Sate to please take over. Hey, Karthik, hi. Uh, thank you for the kind words. Uh, I am actually not as distinguished as what you made it sound to be, actually. But nevertheless, thank you. Uh, hi, all. Good afternoon. Uh, I would be quickly running you through uh, a short presentation. It's going to be really short. And I have made it a point of keeping it in a pictorial format so that uh, I get to converse more and you guys get to see and listen as well. And I think the main icing of the cake is going to be the uh, you know, panel discussion that we're going to have thereafter, right? So can you please uh, start with the presentation? First slide. Uh, okay, so some of the topics that we're going to talk about in the presentation are going to be why low code. Uh, I have many friends in BFSI sector. Many of them, them are like CIOs, CTOs, and they have one single question, why low code or no code? And this question is resounding, especially in banking and finance domain, and rightfully so. We'll come to that as we proceed further. Uh, 
uh, low code for enterprise applications there is a general psyche which i get that people think that you know low code is okay if you are doing some lightweight web apps uh, doing some b2c portals or device responsive and operating system agnostic applications and all but perhaps it is not in the mainstream for enterprise applications which is where the real traction and real serious computing and financial transaction posting happens third is the grapples that i have had so there are as is the case with any technology uh, there are a set of challenges and ways of uh, circumventing those as one embarks on the journey so i'll be talking about my experience on all three of these these are again my views open for different views let's agree to disagree that's what i believe in okay let's move to the next slide okay so why low code uh, simply put uh, you know as the screen shows you know there are several icons visible fast development uh, pretty self explanatory you can really really speed down your development cycle from a couple of months or quarters to you know literally couple of sprints at best right so at advice speaking of myself we have a, an mvp based approach we do everything in agile model we follow agile manifesto as much as we can and in every sprint which is basically 15 day slot we try to deliver a fully functional tangible workable business value solution for the you know sales or business people to be working around with so fast development is one of the main reasons why outsystems or any other low code platform actually surpasses above everything else great ui uh, we all know how difficult it is to build a great ui and to top it all a great ui combined with a great ux is actually like winning half of the battle out there right so outsystems or speaking about you know custom development or custom css of the app or look and feel and user journeys with now systems i think it is quite phenomenal the level of features that are available to you uh, there is something which is called as forge which is uh, an equivalent of app store or play store on mobile devices you can select pick and choose multiple products from there you know install them and start using them from word go so what it allows you is you know uh deliver quick fail faster recover quicker and deliver even quicker i think those are the philosophies of what agility and agile development are all about out systems offers you that and low code is something which makes that experience the entire journey quite unparalleled and engaging seamless database management this is probably most important for many of the banking friends of mine they are paranoid about what happens to the data what happens if data goes out of the country or you know because there are regulators that need to be responded to uh out systems gives many options uh, but picking of uh, the model that you can choose there are multiple versions and iterations within which you can store your data you can directly host your data within their environment you can host it outside of it you can have a hybrid model you can have on prem model you have all possible combinations that any other conventional development offers you otherwise also there are lots of tools available dashboards and you know toolkits available within the environment which give you uh, a lot of insights on how your database is actually performing you know where is your data going if there are any queries that are having memory leaks if there are any queries that are throttling server spikes and response etc it's easier for you to arrive and identify what the issue is so that is one of the key factors of where low code comes in play crowd operations you know create read update delete i think uh, 70% of a developers or a database administrators bandwidth goes in handling all or some of these during any business day uh crowd operations is something which is part and parcel of the life of all techies and low code allows you to do uh crowd operation management with i wouldn't say no code but with a minimal set of code which then in turn adds to the time that you save and then that time can be reused for doing other constructive things hassle free deployment uh most low code platforms you know support 
CI, CD, and uh, a DevOps-based approach. And the beauty of that is you can actually decouple your engineering team and your release management team and your QA team from each other, which means while the developers are churning out their code sprint on sprint, you have a set of QA guys who can again be in manual or automated testing mode. They keep churning out defects or bugs which they discover, keep that code pushing back to the developers and that cycle continues. And your release management team is actually getting the fully cleaned up final iteration of code, which they are free to deploy out systems. And uh, I'm talking about particularly of out systems because it offers the entire gamut of CRUD operations, database, QA, and CI CD pipeline, which is why it was the preferred uh, low code platform of choice for us at Edelweiss. And it allows you to function independent of what your developers are doing, which then allows you quicker releases and lesser bugs trickling down into the final release. Plug and play uh, features of uh, any low code platform are pretty well known, but specifically in today's day and age when MISS and analysis based on data are super critical, there are several toolkits available ready-made apps available within Ford, which you can use. Uh, you know, as far as I know, out systems is from ground up readily pluggable to Power BI and Tableau, to name a few. So if you have expertise on these two stacks, you can straight away start consuming their plugins and you know be more productive in far lesser time. It also allows you direct integration with your tightly coupled code and data set, which then gives you a faster set of delivery cycle. And lastly, I think the most important uh, feature what all low-code platforms offer and out systems in particular is about the unparalleled insights on telemetry. There are, there are two dashboards which uh, I would love to quote here. One is the architectural dashboard within out systems and second is the discovery dashboard. These two dashboards collectively, to my mind, uh, offer unparalleled insights on what your application is doing. It gives you real-time assessment of each and every component of the page. It gives you logical cyclic redundancy errors, your logical gaps, whatever. So it gives a graphical interpretation of all these things, which allows you to deliver quicker and cleaner code in far lesser time. So that in a nutshell is what uh, low code development is about. These are some of the benefits. We will talk about wrappers, which can be perhaps called as not so good stuff or things that you perhaps should be thinking of before you embark on the journey. Right? Move to the next slide, please. Okay. So I will be addressing specifically a low code for enterprise applications here because these are some of the areas of concern for most banks and financial corporations. Right? So there are challenges are things which I have in bits and parts uh, captured on the screen. Most financial organizations and banks have challenges in terms of disparate teams being able to communicate with each other effectively. There are a set of people who have been with the system for several years or decades. And there is a fresh team of people who embark. And then there is conflict of interest, there is conflict of technology, conflicts of understanding, etc. Uh, that is in turn results in a lot of inertia and pushback and you know getting the entire team stressed out in delivering what they are supposed to do. Most digital transformations are about lesser about technology, they are more about how you manage the change. And if one manages the change well, I think the organization can quickly turn things around at a faster pace. Right. So what does low code do for enterprise applications? It is it offers you effective manner of collaborating together and allows you to co-create any particular application together. There is a term which has come up in recent years called a citizen journalist and citizen developer, right? So citizen journalist, what you see online, people who keep reporting stuff. Citizen developer is a set of people who are not having technical skills themselves, but they can define the business process logic. They can define the business workflow in simple flowchart like diagrams. In tech geek speak, we call it UML based interpretation. Uniform markup language uh, is what we often call it. But for citizen developer, it is 
basically a graphical interpretation in a flowchart based model of what a particular logic or how a particular business workflow should function. Uh, low code stacks offer you that functionality, which is why it kind of eliminates the individual level friction within the team. Legacy applications, most banks have crazy amount of legacy applications. You have, you have like Fin1, you have Oracle servers, you have DB2, you have IBM AS400 and whatnot, right? So I think most of the low code platforms today and out systems in particular is all pervasive. I have, I have yet to come across any technology stack which out systems doesn't plug into and doesn't allow you to work with. So which means while, while your old systems continue to function, they are, you can still build an overlay or middleware on top of that and gradually start phasing out or decommissioning the old stuff and start adopting the new. Which is why legacy handling legacy applications is one of the strong points of most low code engineering frameworks. Built in security. Uh, we are on the verge of having a PII and GDPR lock passed already in India. It should be happening in the next couple of months already. Uh, that aside, we have lots of new developments happening on the India digital stack, right? So we, we got Samati, which is account aggregator framework released by iSprint, the Nandan Nilekini run and government of India run setup. We had Gems that I had released earlier. We have the entire Oaken framework released already. What this offers us is the transparency of not letting frauds happen within the financial sectors. And as an extension of that, whatever best practices are followed globally within transaction processing are also supported by most low code platforms, particularly in this case, out. Right? Rapid and easy integration. Uh, it mildly alludes to the legacy stack pluggability, as I said earlier. Uh, you can straight away plug it into any of your existing data stacks, any of your existing middlewares. It is readily compatible with all wide disparate state of APIs, you know, RESTful or otherwise, and you can still consume those in a matter of few clicks, integrate that and your product is ready for usage or consumption. So it has really, really easy way of cross connect and rapid deployment integration than quick iterating development, which is where the rapid integration comes into play. Seamless connect, uh, Many of the teams, and I have observed this to happen in most companies where many of the partnerships are outside of the organization. So speaking of Edelweiss, we, we have types with multiple partners who are into lending business. We have tie-ups internally with various partners who we transact data with. Data is parsed to and so a lot of data gets circulated around. So there has to be a secure way of cross-connecting all these disparate systems, disparate technology frameworks, and still be able to derive the level of security required by the governments and compliance. So low-code platform offers lots of plugins and features which you can use to have that seamless cross-connect with multiple applications. Awesome UI and UX. Uh, many of the local platforms allow custom CSS bundling straight right from scratch, right? So which, which means that you can develop an application which is device responsive, operating system agnostic. It will have a seamless experience on all the screens known to mankind. And it will really be a joy to use as you start taking it further. In fact, there are many uh, controls available within out system which allow one to gamify the user experience that in turn keeps the user engaged more onto the platform and increase the stickiness of the application that you have so it's one of the essential features to have and the best part is you probably would be spending 40 to 60 percent lesser time in building this great ui as what you would otherwise do on any of the other stacks, like maybe .NET Framework or OpenStack, full stacks, or given Java for that matter. So that is one of the strongest points of this, which most enterprises kind of really crave for. Now, banking apps specifically are very mundane. They are very dry in that sense. They are very transactional. And it is essential that you keep the user engaged and make the user coax and tunnel him through the right byways of the applications and harness the power of that app. That 
blazing fast prototyping a super super important thing uh, most banks have uh, you know a release cycle of a couple of weeks or months even there are some banks that i know of who have a release cycle of a quarter right and there could be a good reason for that but the case in point being in today's day and age if there are some components of your entire ecosystem of technology that you can quickly do a poc on quickly do a release to certain select uh, you know users gather feedback from them and come up with a better version of that every next iteration is a better version of what you did the last time i think that gives you a phenomenal power in terms of releasing a good system which will ultimately be accepted by a larger population when it goes right 100% agile compliant i spoke about this already earlier i think out systems uh, and you know it offers compliance to moscow framework you know must have good to have will have won't have so anybody who is aware of agile framework or agile development would be uh, you know pretty compliant in the in the and also will be agreeing to the fact that how difficult it is to self discipline oneself in defining what needs to be done and what is good to have and what should not be done at all right so agile framework and low code development collectively emphasizes on building only those things which really matter to you everything else it doesn't say what be done it will say everything else can be picked up later so do what is absolutely essential for your business today deliver that within an agile model maybe 15 days or two sprint or three sprints and then move on to the next piece of puzzle that's what agile development is about and low code stacks support that ground up and which is why it is so beautiful and so easy to work on massive scalability uh, everything that we have been talking about about low code out systems and anything in that ecosystem is has been built for cloud deployment right so which means you you have the ability of scaling up scaling down so that's the intra part the application itself by virtue of the dashboards that it offers and the telemetry that is available to you has a capacity of scaling up to whatever limit you want your application to take if you are expecting the application to have an onslaught of maybe 1 lakh user on day 1 then there are certain configurations that you can build within the app so that your app is ready for that it won't it won't stumble it won't crash it won't you know crumple under pressure there are several tools available within the framework which allow you that kind of resiliency and that kind of you know elasticity that is what i think uh, these are some of the factors which to my mind are essential to have for any of the organizations to consider low code as a mainstream development framework right so enterprise applications are all about some or all of these parts even more so but i think from we have been working on out system stack for about 2 years now and i have yet to come across a limitation of it in terms of adopting that in a mainstream agile uh, enterprise application that is what my experience is right so we can move to the next one i think i am almost done okay uh, thank you uh, i think you have oh, a, so sorry. most like the last one yeah, yeah, i just... <laughs> okay so some of the grapples i think uh, many of the guys who always talk to me uh, ask me about yeah you have been talking about really the good thing what are the bad things right so i have shared the bad things out here uh, total spend is significant i'm not saying it is cheap yes you will be required to spend a substantial amount but i'll be the devil's advocate knowing most of the systems that we use may that be sap hana or may it be salesforce or may it be you know fin one or any other enterprise application for that matter it is priced within the same perhaps even lesser billable model as against what these enterprise applications are but yes total cost of ownership in terms of the upfront cost as well as the licensing hosting and cost of ownership renewals etc is something that we should consider before you take that plunge or you have to take that leap of faith so that is first grapple to my mind second grapple is availability of skill manpower this is as you would know low code is uh, you know early in india it is a framework which people are gradually accepting on 
Uh, and as is the case with any technology framework, any evolving emerging technology framework, you will have a time frame when there will be lesser skilled people available. Skilled is the key word here. Available resources on our systems or any other low code stack are a plenty, but skilled resources are really scarce. And that is where uh, the difference is between the sun and the moon. It is essential that you pick the right set of people to work on the stack that you choose. That's my second grapple. And third grapple is, I think, more of a mindset challenge. In most organizations, any kind of digital transformation is looked up to as a threat to an individual's legacy or an individual's aura within that organization or an individual's presence and authority. If we come out of that mindset and really start thinking about how we can deliver faster business value, how we can reduce the overall organization's cost in terms of time to delivery, time to value, and the returns that you get by releasing the first two quicker to the market, then I think it's a mindset shift which is essential. And that is the third and most difficult problem to solve because the third problem, the third grapple, talks about changing one's self, changing one's own character and individual attributes, which is to my mind, toughest of all these things, right? So these are three grapples which I've experienced on my low code journey in the last two years. And with that, I think we are at the end of the presentation. Right, thank you, Mr. Shashank from Adelwise uh, for actually sharing great insights on low code development platform, especially for the enterprise uh, how it can be applied to enterprise sector uh, for their business transformation. Um, really insightful. And uh, uh, audience, for those who want to ask any questions to uh, Mr. Sate, you can ask uh, in the chat and uh, you can ask the questions. So now uh, we uh, here put up a poll uh, question for you, audience. Uh, if we would like to present this poll to you and we would like uh, request you to please answer uh, the question. Uh, and uh, I also request my team to present that poll here. When embarking on a digital transformation journey, what are the major considerations in regard to leveraging low code? Is it return on investment, ROI, and time to market? Uh, talent scarcity and building an internal capability? Uh, building enterprise great solutions or something else, other? So you have these four options. I uh, would like to give you a minute uh, it's time to answer this here and uh, after one minute we'll be starting with the panel discussion so uh, i think um, audience has uh, answered the poll and uh, now we will be moving on uh, with the panel discussion uh, there'll be several questions i'll be discussing uh, with the panelists and before that i introduce you all to the uh, two panelists, Mr. Shashank Sathe will be joining the discussion as well. And there'll be two more panelists, uh, Mr. Pramod Jain and Mr. Krishna Ji. I would like to uh, give some details about Mr. Pramod and Mr. Krishna. So, uh, Mr. Pramod Jain is head of delivery at Do It Lean. Uh, he is uh, head of delivery for Do It Lean in India. And he comes with over 16 years of experience in building, managing and delivering large innovative enterprise application. He's an out systems MVP, passionate about technology and people and carrying more than nine years of experience with out systems low code platform. Pramod heads the growth of the delivery organization while uh, working closely with sales team and be responsible for all hiring and resources. He drives software development activities to meet aggressive schedules and timeliness uh, while uh, maintaining the highest bar of quality and a focus on exceeding customer expectations. Experienced delivery head with a demonstrated history of working in the information technology and services industry, skilled in customer relationship management, global delivery and portfolio management, strong command on operational excellence, automation and digital transformation. A warm welcome to you, Mr. Pramod. And uh, I also introduce you to Mr. Mr. Krishna Kumarji, uh, who is the solution architect head for India in our systems. Uh, Mr. Krishna is an innovative technology leader with the 17 plus years of industry experience and trusted advisor with strong leadership skills 
acquired uh, realizing uh, realizing the products and solutions across the business applications and infrastructure technology platforms and driven large transformation projects consulting pre sales and enterprise architecture and specializes in digital transformation and has helped global customers achieve transformation through innovation on run as well as change side of the businesses krishna has uh, led the global it transformation programs to identify and prioritize the right opportunities to get the best roi drive operating cost reduction revenue uplift and improve customer experience with the global customers he specializes in technology and architect uh, architecture strategy enterprise workflow automation interoperability serviceability large scale distributed software sas uh, platform uh, paas platform ias platforms enterprise application monitoring and enterprise cloud migration transformation projects we are uh, glad to have both of you in this panel discussion thanks Welcome. karthik thanks for having us so uh, and uh, mr shank sate is already here with us uh, we heard him uh, a wonderful presentation by him and uh, we will start with the first topic and i request my team to please show that uh, topic here return on investment and time to market it was one of the poll uh, question options uh, with our audience as well and it is a very important topic to you know uh, discuss on return on investment and time to market the most important aspects of any business especially the enterprise uh, it becomes the most important aspect and uh, when we talk of roi and time to market uh, shank because we had uh, seen your presentation i would like to uh, throw first question uh, to you uh what do you think uh, cost of ownership uh, do you think cost of ownership is a concern to many organizations and what has been your experience uh, any thoughts you can share with us on how to measure the return on investment roi uh, with this out system platform uh, your take sir uh yeah thanks sure so uh, you know cost of uh, ownership and return on investments is something that i would like to elude on on you know what my uh, you know thought process is uh, one is what do you value do you value do you value the spend that you are doing on owning a particular application or do you value the time within which you're going to be releasing workable business solutions to the market right for example if you have you have thought of a solution which is innovative in your area of function however it's going to take you 8 months or 1 year to deliver that solution out to the masses my question is how important is the cost component to you and that first thing, right so if you want that application to be live as of yesterday then perhaps you would overlook the value that you want to derive out of it and ignore the amount of spend you want to do with it because you probably have a far higher potential of earning benefits and businesses from the application that you release right so from that perspective i think i think value of investment of time money efforts etc on out systems should be looked at from that perspective not what you spend in terms of you know hard currency but i think the value that it derives and returns to you for the decision that you take i think that is phenomenal and to to quote again as what you mentioned what i mentioned in the presentation you know time to value quick iterative developments and phenomenal way of maintaining an application as a long term perspective i think these are three areas which i would focus on if i were to quantify what my cost of ownership is going to be. i think these three far supersede the spend that i'm going to do that that what perfect perfect it it brings a sort of a clarity uh, here on this question and uh, 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 pramod i would like to ask you uh, that uh, uh, in that topic there is another important aspect uh, which is for a marriage is, is the time to market so i would like to ask you that how this low code platform uh, supports the uh, you know fast delivery uh, i would like to ask you uh, okay. your take on so, yeah uh, so Karthik, uh, before I answer your question, I would like to first focus on the key challenges that the organization faces while building the custom, you know, application for their organization. So, if we talk about the top three challenges, 
out of you know top three challenges, the two challenges are basically related with the length of the time that required to build an application, right? The first one is to meeting the business requirement on the time. And the second one is again to make changes or update an inbuilt or existing application which you build with any other platform. Now, with our journey with our systems, uh, as, as, as uh, you know, you mentioned that I have been into our systems, especially in low-code industry since nine years. I've seen a significant improvement uh, in the overall, uh, you know, goal of organization to reach into the market as fast as they can. Because every organization or company, they wanted to, you know, go to the market yesterday, not even today or tomorrow. So this is what the approach is. And when especially when we talk about out systems out the, the moment you start adopting the out systems platform the first thing you bring within your organization is that you already remove the thousands line of code that are supposed to write by your own so you are already ahead in the race you don't need to you know write the hundreds or thousands lines of code to make everything possible now the second aspect of it it being a visual programming model Right, so it's just, I mean, you don't need a great expertise or very strong technical people to understand the technology, which again makes your development faster. So you can definitely use the in-house resources and we'll talk maybe later on about how can we utilize our in-house resources in that. Now, the other part is uh, Shishank also mentioned in his, uh, you know, in his uh, discussions about the Forge. Forge is, is a component or repository like other tools other you know, uh, technical competitors as maybe a Microsoft store or, or Apple store or any other uh, you know, technical partners have. Similarly, our system has a forge which is having thousands of inbuilt components. So you are just, just need to go there, choose the right component and, and just integrate it with your platform, which is ideally available. Now uh, with this, our systems, when I talk about our systems, I would say it's not just a platform to develop your application, but it supports you in your entire life cycle of software development, starting from design, development, deployment, monitoring, and a lot of elements is inbuilt available within the platform. So you don't only need to, you know, consider it as a development platform, rather you can consider it as the overall, you know, uh, platform which take care of your intra overall software development journey. Now, there are other things like a lot of accelerators are available within our system. So I'll take an example. For instance, if you want to integrate with SAP or Salesforce, uh, the typical way of doing this, you need to do a lot of you know, R&D in order to find out the right endpoints to the SAP. You have to do a handshake with, with, within two platforms, right? which may take two weeks time just to initiate the integration. But without systems, you'll have easily available the accelerators, which you call integration builder, which can, you know, uh, you just need five, 10 minutes time to schedule or to, to configure the integration between these two. Similarly, in terms of UI UX implementation, again, uh, because I'm a technical guy and I, I see, I closely work with the customer and I see what's their expectations with the platform is, and I see, um, you know, when, when it comes to UI UX development, especially when you initiate a project, right? At that time itself, you basically work on a, on a to design a theme or layout of the application to look consistent throughout the application. In normal ways, when you go with the traditional technology, you have to maintain and manage a lot of HTML, CSS, which may take, you know, 10 days, 15 days times to come up with a, you know, strong uh, theme and layout, but without systems, the moment you create an application and you add your logo to the application, based on your logo, it decides what the primary and secondary color you require, what kind of theme it, it takes, and it will create you the theme and layout within five, 10 minutes, right? Uh, and other aspects, as I talk about, like we have architecture dashboard to, to take care of the technical devs to, you know, take care of the security of the applications. Now our system's coming up with citizen development, development concept as well, wherein not only your technical people, but even if you're, you know, if you have non-technical people who understand your business, they can go uh, and easily create a workflow, which, which is readily available for the other users to start working upon. So if you consider, the overall you know features provided by a low code platform and when i'm talking about out systems especially without systems your time to market already increases and 
With our experience with so many customers who adopted our system, we have seen a significant improvement in their overall goal of reaching to the market as soon as possible. Right, right. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Pramod. Uh, and I would like to now ask you, Mr. Krishna, uh, from our systems. Uh, I think uh, it is noticeable in the industry uh, that uh, our system is the leader in this low-code uh, low development uh, technology. So I would like to ask you that uh, what are the plans uh, you know you have to continue being this at this position of top player in this very hot market of uh, low code, um, Mr. Krishna. Yeah, thanks. Thanks for the question, Karthik. And yes, you know as you mentioned, you know we are a Gartner leaders in this particular uh, space. And um, uh, primarily, you know, it goes back to what our customers want to do with the solution, right? And I think Sashank. Uh, really kind of described his local journey and he captured the uh, journey really, really well. And thanks for that, Shashank. And uh, um, like Edelweiss, you know, every organization wants to deliver fast, innovative and robust applications and user experiences. Right? And uh, uh, change has been a very uh, critical part there. And you know, Shashank kind of touched upon it really well in terms of Agile. Uh, how do you prioritize change and you know how do you uh, pick the right party to fight with uh, up for it, right? So that was a, a good example. And, you know, we see pressure from an organizations on two areas. One is the uh, a faster digital transformation because of COVID as well as because, because of the regulatory changes, so on and so forth. You know, the way uh, people engage with organizations have completely shifted the way companies are, uh, I mean, you know, reacting to that change as well. And the second uh, challenge that we are seeing is the faster delivery time. That is required, you know, delivery cycle that is being required as well, right? So the uh, everybody has a mobile now, and you know there is a lot of uh, focus around delivering services on mobile, even if it is not mobile. The same level of user experience is being demanded from the, uh, the customers, basically, right? With all with these challenges in mind, you know, we are constantly innovating on three primary uh, areas. Uh, for uh, continuing to be top on this particular quadrant, right? So the first area that we concentrate on from our systems is uh, how to build these applications faster, right? So our, our systems helps developers build serious applications very quickly and efficiently. Uh, it is, uh, I mean, you know, Pramod did explain about the visual model-driven development, etc. So we constantly make sure that, you know, uh, we innovate faster in terms of, you know, trying to get the, um, application build process in a faster way. That is the first uh, area that we concentrate on. And the second area is uh, about building the applications the right way, right? So uh, it should be uh, life cycle optimization. It should be mission critical by design as well as enterprise grade security. Uh, whatever you build fast should also be built right so that it is sustainable in the long term. So that is the second area that we invest in. And the third area that we invest in, uh, basically, the building the applications for the future. It's a future-proofing your applications so that uh, uh, the applications are relevant and modern even after a couple of years from now, because the constant uh, phase in changing technology. Right? So these are the primary three uh, areas that we continue to invest in from our systems to make sure that we uh, remain on top. And uh, we are, you know, uh, just uh, for November 16, 17, and 18, we are having our systems developer conference as well as our systems next step, where we are going to talk about what is our roadmap and what are the new changes that are coming up in the new platform to make sure that we continue to be the leader in this space. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Krishna. Uh, for, uh, now, I think uh, we can uh, touch upon the next, next aspect. Uh, of this, uh, which is uh, talent scarcity and building an internal capability. And uh, this, this is also one of the options of the poll which we had uh, presented here. And it becomes a very, very important aspect uh, with the enterprise uh, uh, in using any technology. And uh, again, I would like to uh, ask first you, uh, Mr. Krishna, uh, because the OutSystems platform is uh, uh, dealing with this technology and it's still uh, fairly recent here in this country india and uh, i would like to ask from you that uh, how hard it is to find developers uh, for this new technology you know who know the technology well and uh, can the expertise be an issue or and if it can be an issue then how our system is trying to solve this gap yeah. Yeah. Uh, thanks for the question Patrick. so um, 
Sashank is a, a long-time customer already, and you know Pramod has been, as you rightly pointed out in the introduction, he's been operating uh, out of India for the last nine, nine years, right? Definitely, as an outsourcing is new to India, but uh, as a technology, it is about twenty-year-old company uh, with a fairly mature technology space, right? Definitely, yes, it is new to India, and uh, with the help of uh, partners like Do It Lean, you know, who brings in a lot of. Uh, uh, visibility as well as uh, I mean, you know, delivery values that we talked about to our joint customers. You know, we are doing a good stride in the market. And uh, with that being said, you know, any technology during the initial development phase will go through this demand of uh, uh, supply and uh, supply constraints as well as demand constraints. Right? I think Sashank touched upon it really well uh, during his grapples as well. And um, what we are doing to make sure that we are bridging this gap is, you know, we are uh, driving a dedicated community initiative. Uh, we are, uh, I mean, you know, we are doing four things under this community initiative, right? So one is basically uh, we are reaching out to the universities to have an outsystems education program where we will uh, include this as part of curriculum uh, so that people, uh, engineers who are coming out of the college can be trained on outsystems development activities. And then we do have outsystems user groups so that there are local meetups which can evangelize as well as help each other, each community members to make sure that they get better each day. Uh, I mean, you know, come into the platform as well as get better each day. And then we also have a GSI community enablement where we are, uh, I mean, you know, enabling partners at a large scale to deliver using our systems. And as you know, India is a developer hub, right? So um, for, from India, we are not just serving uh, to India, but we through India we are serving the uh, whole globe. So we are concentrating on that as well. And uh, apart from that, you know, we are also trying to uh, educate the lateral, uh, uh, I mean, you know, uh, people experienced in .NET or Java, you know, we do run something called as a 14 days of outsystem challenge, uh, where we uh, nurture and where, where we encourage people to learn outsystems in 14 days, because frankly, that is how much it takes for an existing developer to learn outsystems and start working on it. And um, these are the four, uh, on a broad level, four initiatives we are running to make sure that we are meeting the uh, demand that is being generated. And apart from that, you know, we do have an online community which has about 500,000 people as of today. And it has one of the fastest response time in case if you are stuck somewhere, you are asking some questions, um, that is one of the fastest uh, uh, place to seek help. And uh, apart from that, there is there are also MVP and Champions program, you know, uh, Pramod is an MVP, Outsist is MVP. And these are the various ways, you know, we are trying to incentivize as well as evangelize to low code in India to make sure that uh, we have a larger adoption, not just from an enterprise wise, but also from the uh, developer community. Right, that's great, Krishna. It looks like you are very well planned and, you know, approaching the future really well. Uh, that's nice to know. And uh, uh, as uh, I would like to ask you, Mr. Shashank, uh, you have been a long time partner and a client uh, of uh, our systems. Um, as far as I know. So I would like to ask you that uh, as an OutSystems customer, um, how did you manage your implementation? I think I, my question, uh, you know, goes in the direction on, of the dependence on the, uh, you know, vendor. So uh, I would like to ask you that, were you totally dependent on uh, the delivery partners or did you build your teams to become autonomous as well? Uh, your take on, on this. Yeah, a great question, actually. Uh, we, when we started, and uh, alluding to uh, what clarification Krishna and Pramod gave earlier, I think it is extremely important to have the right partner, right? Uh, I wouldn't quote any names, but uh, we kind of had very, you know, kind of cryptic problems initially by virtue of, uh, you know, associating ourselves with a not so knowledgeable partner, right? And at that time, uh, all of us at Edelweiss were also new on OutSystem stack as such. So even we were learning. And the partner that we tied up with was, you know, not as probably knowledgeable as what we expected him to be, right? So that was actually, you know, a setback for us. But, it, you know, in hindsight, it was all in the good spirit. And it gave us phenomenal learning. And at that time itself, we started building our own COE in-house. So today we have a hybrid model. We have equal number of uh, people who are working as our extended team, I would call it. I, I don't call them even business partners. I look at them as our extended teams who are not sitting within the office. 
but they are part of our team because we all work as one team in agile model and half of the team members that we have we have you know self learned we have gone through the knowledge system online as krishna mentioned you know the entire uh, self learning mechanism is pretty strong and robust i myself have been trying to pursue uh, for certifications i hopefully i'll clear them soon enough in the future uh, case in point being i think a hybrid model works best because then that gives you the flexibility of taking the right conscious decisions also it is important that whoever trains himself or herself in our systems better be a good developer on any of the existing stacks before he embarks on our system because then that will allow that individual to take conscious and calculated right decisions as again there is a difference between a 3 or 4 year old .net developer or a full stack developer will take as against the decision that an engineering graduate who is just out of the college and who got himself certified on our system will take right so i think the former is the right approach to go by the later can perhaps be used for smaller tasks that's what what our learning has been perfect perfect uh, mr shank and uh, i think uh, there's one question uh, for mr pramod uh, because mr pramod you have an experience of uh, working with several out system customers and when we talk about the delivery so how is this challenge you know commonly addressed uh, and what are your thoughts and recommendations on this all right so kartik as as uh, i mean first thing i always you know believe in that if you are not planned you are already planned to fail and even when you are adopting a technology not specifically out systems or any other low code platform but when you are opting a technology you have to have you know follow a certain strategy like how you wanted to take ahead the technology itself now i see there are three different uh, options that you have so first is you have to look within your organization because they understand your business right they understand the culture that you have and it is good if you try to identify the people who has right skill to learn this technology and then you may need to bring the right learning path to them maybe out system is an option to go through a boot camp wherein you can you know bring your resources and out system helps you you know uh, your resource to learn this technology uh, the second approach is you can go to the market and try to find out the the experienced resources who can fulfill your you know uh, technical need when it comes to a technology or maybe out systems as a low code platform uh the third approach i'd see is bringing the right partner and again uh, i can tell it bringing a partner but i'm again telling it bringing the right partner which is very important and sashank already mentioned about it so at times what happens is uh, you know while choosing a partner you have to make sure that the partner has the right expertise right and then there are few models uh, usually when we uh start working with the customer we offer them a, a co working model wherein while working on their projects we do the heavy lifting at the same time we will start enabling their resources and work in a co delivery model and gradually the resources from the customer can start taking up the you know bigger task as well and eventually we get out of you know uh, the 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 main line steam line development and then the customer based on what size or what kind of people they have they start taking it over uh, the other part is uh, when i started 9 year back and i just wanted to talk about it uh, when i started 9 year back there is a very few people who who even you know know about out systems a local platform and no one was ready to you know uh change the streamlined technology from dotnet or java to out systems but now uh low code is being you know getting into market lot the lot of other adoptions globally for the low code platforms people are going for it because of you know the value it is bringing and at the same time the resources the technical people are more interested to learn this technology so i see this gap is filling and eventually maybe you know coming one or two years there will be a lot of other talent available who knows our systems in and out and and they start helping the customers thank you mr pramod uh, for answering this question and uh, now i think uh, there is a third uh, another important aspect which is, which is uh, building enterprise grade capabilities or enterprise uh, grade solutions and uh, again my question is to mr krishna uh, that it is an, another uh, common aspect uh, uh, like building 
enterprise great applications and uh, i would like to ask you mr krishna that uh, what do you think can uh, this go code or you know visual programming truly be used to build enterprise level applications and uh, how do you support the aspects of uh, scalability security performance etc uh, mr krishna yeah. uh thanks thanks lot uh, kaltek and uh, i think you know sashank kind of covered it really really well and he also kind of addressed uh, uh very early on about this point of you know uh, should the low code be looked at for more business critical applications or just you know small green applications right you know for us um definitely and you know uh, edelweiss is one of the marquee customers who stand a testimony to that right so um out systems delivers serious applications serious productivity for complex applications right um that being said um uh, uh scalability wise you know we are, as a platform our system supports uh, both vertical scalability as well as horizontal horizontal scalability um, it is a complete open platform uh, which are adopted by 1500 plus customers today right so uh, from a, a scalability perspective we make sure that uh, not just from a platform perspective it is scalable but the code that we generate for the models that you drag and drop are created using uh, ai as well as you know uh, adhering to best practices just to make sure that it is scalable and performant um from a security wise you know uh, while you know application infra security we can uh, divide it into two right so um, infra level you know depending on the customer uh, whether it is a on premise customer or a saas based customer um, we uh, i mean the infra security kind of comes on top of that uh but what we have done from an application security perspective is uh, something unique right so we have uh, made sure that we have support for the vast top 10 vulnerabilities and we constantly scan the models that are being grabbed and dropped dragged and dropped by the developer to make sure that they are not introducing any new vulnerabilities while creating these applications in a very visual manner right so we constantly check on that and we make sure that we uh, give a pop up to the developer saying that um hey this is good you have done these many uh, steps so far but uh, by doing uh, i mean you know by checking a box called uh, uh, anonymous you are going to uh, i mean you know expose some data to your end users which is uh, not desirable do you still want to continue that right so we give very interactive pop ups at the bottom to make sure that um, developers are fully aware of the security risk uh, before you know going into production and you know sometimes you know you are over, overlooking these facts and you anyway uh, push the application to production we have a uh, uh, same kind of an ai running on the production boxes as well just to make sure that as a post fact we keep checking um if i mean did any of the security issues actually make it to production if they are what are the easier ways to fix the security issues and also the scalability and performance uh, suggestions right so uh, it is kind of a closed loop system that we have built to make sure that developers are knowing about these issues while developing the application and also see them from a production point of view whether they are continue to happen if that is the case how to fix it. right uh, thank you mr krishna here i would like to know your thoughts uh, shashank uh, about uh, building enterprise level applications because you have built a large financial portfolio based on this technology so mr sathe uh, have you come across any such challenges your thoughts please Uh, uh challenges i wouldn't say challenges per se i think uh, there were initial apprehensions in terms of our governance and compliance teams uh and again you know being a devil's advocate today even the governance and technology uh compliance teams need a knowledge refresh because they have been doing their compliance related the the yardstick the the benchmark by which they grade any applications compliance level is in huge disparity as against what the low code framework offers right so i'll give an example one of my compliance team is asking me show us how many lines of code have you written and my answer was zero how do they assess something that they can't see correct so i think it's a it's a knowledge shift that is essential for that ecosystem as well i think that was one area that we had to do internal grooming and handholding on second was about the security element uh, you know people were fanatical about uh, how secure this development stack was and again i'll go back to what i said even that needs recalibration because 
all the things that are known in you know older or legacy technology stack as vulnerabilities probably don't even apply for low code development platform you know but things like code hijack or sql injections you know you fudging around with the code repository going in back end and making changes to code behind etc i mean these don't even exist these are these are not possible in in view of the low code development framework right so i think there is a calibration uh, shift that needs to be done and speaking of uh, enterprise applications i think so long as your application is able to communicate effectively and seamlessly with the data that has been generated by your systems i think it should be all okay correct so i am passionate about applications that i have built but i am in love only with the data that the application creates every application has its own shelf life and there is a evolution and decay life for every application what matters is the data so long as i am able to extract that data and able to derive value out of it into my new system everything should be okay i cannot be in you know in in a debt grip kind of a situation with my old applications merely because i built it or somebody else built it the the fact of the matter is the applications are for the business the business is not for the application right the business is all about having to be able to carry forward that data being able to derive value out of it and i think any low code stack today uh, there is to this basic paradigm should be good enough and accepted that's what our learning was thank you mr shashank and uh, i think uh... i would like to wrap up uh, with this discussion with one question uh, and then we have some audience questions as well uh, and I, i'll ask the question to pramod the uh, another common concern is pramod getting stuck with the platform at times uh, people find that uh, uh, the the challenge with various technologies including this one so is there the vendor lock in uh, you know is there a vendor lock in with the out system platform or how do you move out so okay so uh, i see it as a key differentiator when we compare our systems with other low code platform so our systems promise you from the very first day that any point of time if you want to get away from the platform you'll have your own code that you can deploy in your own infrastructure and that code can be taken forward by your own developer now what is the reason behind it why out systems is claiming that so the most important aspect of it that out systems works on a very standard technology right so when it comes to development out systems the code that out system generates is the very common code right like code generated in react the, the server side code in c sharp they use html and css the very common html css which is used by any other technology as well right so from the development perspective when you get the generated code anyone who is experienced in this technology can easily understand the code and they will be able to take it forward the second is uh, second point is uh, about the infrastructure so unlike the other low code platforms or or the other technologies wherein they need some uh, proprietary software to be installed right to run your application our systems doesn't want you to run any proprietary license Uh, or any anything like that once you get away from the platform so it is similar to where you host your dotnet based application or php based application the same environment you can host out systems application as well and as i said with the code that has been generated by out systems that can be taken forward by the team that you have who has experience in react c sharp html css and maybe some database modeling so there's nothing like vendor lock in at any point of time customer thinks that this is not the right choice or we or if it is not happened at all i mean with my experience with you know our systems customer who has adopted they are happily uh, you know uh, happily and 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 satisfying their self their needs with the our systems platform but even if there is a situation our systems allow you to follow a proper defined path of detaching the entire portfolio entire code which can be taken forward by your own internal team Oh, that's that's great. I think that flexibility has to be there uh, for the clients, and uh, that's great of uh, having this uh, 
uh, having no sort of vendor lock in with the out in the out system platform i think i, I should quickly take uh, some of the audience questions and uh, uh, pramod uh, there are a couple of questions for you um, i would like to start with one i think there's one that was uh, partially answered by mr shashank in his discussion uh, in his um, one of the answers how much code has to be written outside of the out system platform in a real world project like edelweiss discussed today so pramod this question is for you <laughs> yeah and i think I, i would like sasang to answer this question but because i was being involved from the very first day in the edelweiss dlp implementation and as far as i see uh, you know i never came across a situation where we need to look you know after or look behind beyond the out system platform to write something to make the implementation done however if we talk about the flexibility that our systems is very flexible in in order to if you have something already built in if you have in dot net code which is already available within your uh, you know technology stack you can definitely bring in that code and start using it without you know uh, worrying about whether it is it is compatible with our systems or not so with my experience especially with edelweiss and even in, in 9 10 years of experience working with different customer i see uh 99.9% applications are starting from a small to big enterprise application can be done without systems without even thinking about a single line of code outside the out systems platform but of course if it is required out system is very flexible and allow you to extend your code using visual studio or you can write your own html css which can be easily integrated with the platform right there is one more question for you mr pramod i think i should take the question uh, for you what limitations should i expect with out systems around ux and engaging end customers okay so uh uh if if you talk about limitation see limitation comes in the picture when you are bound to use something which is offered by the platform but out systems there there's nothing like it so first out systems comes up with a lot of inbuilt templates that can be easily reused based on the you know industry standards so for instance if you want to build an order management application or if you want to build an you know dashboard out systems has already built in templates available that can be you know uh, generated within a click now if you still think that there's something which is not available in our systems and as i said answered my previous question that you can at any point of time bring in or your own design your own html css and plug in plug it in with our systems to to get your own design own user experience right so uh, i don't see any limitation uh, when it comes to user experience or building the beautiful or customized ui our system is very much flexible to first in terms of you know providing feature it has a great out systems ui capabilities which are easily readily available within the platform at the same time it offers you to bring your own html css or design to the platforms without having much you know putting much effort efforts to it so i don't see any limitation in in this regards right uh, okay there's a question for you mr shashank that uh, in your opinion what would be the biggest challenges for the fsi company in the next couple of years uh i think i think there are a couple of uh, there are a couple of clear cut uh, defined road map items we have india digital stack i already mentioned about so those are those are the easy part actually so account aggregator gst and aggregation token framework are uh, first things was which are about to happen they are already happening with several banks already uh, next comes the PII and GDPR compliance that is going to be coming down very heavily on all the financial fintechs and banks as we go forward. Uh, the next extension, obviously, naturally, will be if you if you if you look at these two, these two are the uh, foundations for reducing and eliminating financial frauds. That's what the government is consciously working on. Correct. So these two steps are about. hardening the uh, exploit of individuals personal data and it's about turning down the possibility of bad debtors and people who default on any of financial transactions he also is encouraging you to make as many financial transactions transparent as you can 
And hence, once you have these two things happening as a foundation, then obviously the next step is some banks have already been told to adopt that, is to adopt a, you know, blockchain based transaction processing and hyperledger fabric based ledger processing. That will be actually the final nail in the coffin when it comes to conducting any kind of financial fraud. Because then the entire ecosystem on you know, committing a transaction, keeping a repository of it, and then reporting it is kind of getting addressed by these three large initiatives. These are what I think are clearly the roadmap for next one and a half to two years for most banks and fintechs as far as the government's initiatives are concerned. Perfect, perfect. And I think uh, I should take the last question uh, because we are running out of time as well. I would like to uh, take this question, which is for you, Mr. Krishna. And it is um, something uh, I think it should, I, even I should have asked you uh, at the start of this, that how do you get started without systems? So there's something, a very basic question asked by one of the audience. Sure, sure, Kartik. Uh, so uh, it's really, really easy, really, uh, I mean, you know, uh, intuitive to start, get started. Uh, two things, right? So one is uh, there is a you know, figure outsystems.com slash learn. Uh, there are courses available for becoming a web developer, mobile developer, uh, as well as, you know, a bridge course for uh, .NET experts, right? Uh, to quickly get started on outsystems, these courses are completely free. You will be able to access them from outsystems.com. And you could also download your personal environment. Uh, if you go to outsystems.com, right hand top corner, you would see a red button called Start Free. Then you click on it, you will be able to register and download a copy of Outsystems and start uh, learning as well as working on the platform. So it is really easy to get started and very intuitive to learn Outsystems. Okay, that's great, uh, Mr. Krishna. And here I would like to thank once again to Mr. Shank Sate, Senior Vice President of Advice. Financial Services Limited, Mr. Pramod Jain, Head of Delivery in Do It Clean, and uh, Mr. Krishna Ji, uh, Head of Out Systems. Uh, thank you very much for this very insightful discussion on a very important technology of low code uh, development platform, especially for the enterprise uh, sector. Uh, it really uh, is very insightful uh, for the audience, and I also thank audience to be very active and uh, throughout the webinar and uh, for their presence. And I would like to thank uh, uh, the eminent speakers. And here we would like to close uh, this uh, uh, discussion. And uh, if uh, anybody has to uh, connect with uh, uh, these, these speakers here, uh, uh, if you get any questions, please feel free to contact us at uh, 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 the number given to you, 995211701 of India plus sign one, Mr. Rakesh uh, Sashidharan, Director of Sales in Do It Clean India. Uh, the idea is info at the rate uh, doitclean.com, www.doitclean.com is also uh, is the website. And uh, you can also write to Elets and uh, we can convey your questions, your queries uh, to the eminent speakers who have been speaking here. And here, I would like to thank OutSystems, Do It Clean and Advice, the eminent speakers, and uh, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you all. Thanks. Thanks, Thanks everyone. Thank, Thank you. Everyone. you. Bye. विश्व में हमने युवाओं की आईटी एनर्जी के माध्यम से अपना एक रूपा खड़ा किया है 
और भारत इसके बाद के लिए गर्व कर सकता है दुनिया में हम आंख में आंख मिला करके बात कर सकते हैं और ये मेरा साथ में हमेशा कहता है आई टी प्लस आई टी इज इक्वल टू आई टी इंफॉर्मेशन टेक्नोलॉजी प्लस इंडियन टैलेंट 